Mixing with my plugin of the week is the Sound Radix Surfer EQ2. If you are familiar uh, with the Sound uh, Radix products, they make some really, really, really unique plugins. Uh, which I love, and uh, you may be familiar with the Surfer EQ, the original Surfer EQ, which was also amazing. This is an uh, adaptation or an update to uh, the original Surfer EQ, and what's unique about the Surfer EQ itself was that it uh, the equalization tracked pitch. So we've had dynamic EQs, and many companies have come up with dynamic EQs, and primarily the dynamics are about boost or attenuation. Uh, that is frequency dependent. So as a certain frequency uh, um, uh, um, center uh, hits a certain band, it would cause it to either boost or attenuate uh, accordingly, and you could set attack and release times accordingly. Um, this takes it to one other level, because um, with the original Surfer EQ, what you had was frequency booster attenuations that would actually follow the pitch. So this is really primarily designed for monophonic pitch-based instruments, although it will work with drums and percussion, loops, um, and also harmonic instruments, Oh, because you can use it as a standard EQ, or you could also use it in surfer mode, where it actually tracks and follows the pitch. So obviously, if you have harmonic content, that creates a lot of confusion, and it doesn't quite work as well. But there's some really unique features that I want to go over, and that really make this... Um, a step above what we've seen with normal dynamic EQs. Because with the dynamics, the dynamics have always, as, as I just said, between boost and attenuation, but this also tracks pitch. And one of the main additions here to the Surfer EQ2 is now we have the ability to add in or have um, gain adjustments dynamically in addition to the dynamic adjustments following pitch as you're going along. So why would you need something like this? The basic idea of it is, is that with static equalization, where you have certain boosts, it works most effectively on instruments that have fixed pitches, like uh, percussion and drum instruments, where the, the instruments are tuned to a specific frequency. But once you start to get into musical instruments, like basses and guitars that kind of move around or harmonically are more dense, where the frequencies cover a wider spectrum, boosting or cutting within narrow frequency bands can sometimes lead to making certain notes disappear or making other notes exaggerated. And so you have to be very conscious of that. With the Surfer EQ, you get a lot of flexibility in terms of its ability to kind of follow the pitch while keeping a focus. One of the great things about working with uh, just like a standard EQ on something like a kick drum is you could focus to that fundamental frequency, boost it, and it will always stay con constant. But if you're working with the bass, the bass is going to be changing notes and it's going to be riding up to different strings and different notes to follow the chord changes. Therefore, a static EQ may make certain notes exaggerated while leaving other notes um, a little more hollow sounding. And with this, we can track and kind of move accordingly. So I'm going to show you some examples specifically with the bass. But first, let's kind of go over the, uh, the graphic user interface. It's a seven band EQ. So you have the seven bands here. You have a, a high pass filter and a low pass filter here on the top end. Each band can be placed uh, in or out with an on switch. Um, then you have uh, two bands on uh, just on the inside of that that can also be used as a shelving EQ as well as a peaking EQ. So you could place them in that way. Uh, and then the three middle EQs are um, are will work as a peaking uh, peak or dip EQ. And then with the middle one, having one special feature where it adds like a harmonic um, uh, detection engine. And this is like a harmonic filter, which adds in a completely different um, characteristic sound uh, to it. So we'll kind of go through some of that. Now, with each band, what you have is the ability. So if I just here, if I stay here and I apply a boost, let me put on a band here. What I can do here is I can have... A, a boost, so you can see here a, a pretty sizable boost. And what I can do is I can change the cue, right? So what we have is um, uh, different cue settings, four different stepped cue settings. So I could keep something really focused here. And then what I could do is I could shift where in the harmonic spectrum that it kind of um, follows. So I could have it follow more along the fundamental, but I could also have it follow a tone that's uh, below the fundamental. So I could have the bass when it goes into upper notes actually have some low end energy that's kind of added in so it doesn't thin out. And it will follow the pitch as it moves up and scales up with the bass. So we'll see that. So in surf mode, what'll happen is it will dynamically follow. Otherwise, it will be fixed, as you see here, to 65 hertz. All right, so now once we see input signal, this will 
right? So uh, hold on one here. I'm going to get to that other feature in a second. Right, so you could see here that it follows the pitch accordingly and will apply this EQ. Now, I can also make it so that it's a dynamic EQ, and a dynamic EQ works in one of two basic ways. I can have it so that uh, in the first setting, with the peak switch kind of coming up, I'll zoom in here just to kind of make this a little more obvious because some of the graphics here are pretty small. What it'll do is, dynamically, it will boost uh, according to attack and recovery settings. Right, so not only is the pitch movement, right, it's also uh, uh, going through uh, dynamically, but also the boost and the attenuation. So if I work it this way, what will end up happening is it will start with the boost, and then when it's triggered, it will attenuate. So um, this is another way. This is another way to take a certain area where perhaps if you have an attack that is like a, like a, a pick sound that you wanted to get rid of, you could have it dip when that pick happens, but recover quickly so the rest of the EQ follows through the sustain of the note, like that type of thing. And so we can you can play around with things like that. Also, with a circuit, that can work two ways. So if I go back, let me just kind of go back to the circuit, but I work with an attenuation, it will start, it will start attenuating in different frequency areas and then pick it up. So this is actually something that can work quite cool. Like if we have, uh, for example, uh, a high pass filter here, what I could do is I can set it up in that uh, same uh, kind of gate mode where what happens, where it shuts down um, when, when the instrument is not playing. And the cool part about that is you can use something like this on a snare drum or toms that have cymbal bleed. And what it'll do is it'll just kind of um, put a damper down just on those high frequencies like a, like a gate, but still allow some of the natural resonance of the instrument. So this will help to prevent, you know, like pushing the snare louder or the toms louder and and getting exaggerated hi-hat or, um, or cymbal bleed, which is also kind of a cool feature. So you can keep that in as like a dampening. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go with like, um, uh, if I keep it in normal uh, mode like this, then it will just track dynamically um, uh, across the spectrum, the frequency spectrum without gain adjustment. And if I want to, I can also add in another band, which is actually uh, can be cool here, where I could go to an upper harmonic, and now I can work uh, something in the in the mid range frequencies that will allow me to bring more presence energy in. Same basic idea. I'm going to do it again with a narrow cue. Raise this up a little bit. And if I feel like this harmonic is up too high, which it is a little bit, I can move it more to a warmer mid range frequency to get rid of some of the buzziness. And this can also act as a, as a way of kind of shutting down frequencies on the top end. So you can get into all kinds of creative ways of working with this, but that is the, the fundamental basic. So what you have is a combination of things, an on-off switch. You have um, a um, what's called it, the uh, GTE mode, which is just kind of working with a normal gain structure. You could have it boost dynamically or attenuate dynamically. So what's happening is it's boosting or attenuating dynamically. If you go to the uh, to the lower arrow, what happens is it starts with the boost or attenuation and it works towards no EQ when the instrument plays. So you get basically three fundamental options 
of working with it uh, statically or dynamically. So I'm going to st set this up, excuse me, here to boost. And if I wanted to increase the, uh, the recovery time, I can do that down here. So I have attack settings. Or I can make it really fast. And it tracks incredibly quickly, so there's there's a lot to uh, to kind of work with. There's also some thresholds here. The pitch threshold, what this does is it sets like the uh, noise floor for pitch detection. So this is working specifically with the pitch detection when you're working with the setting. The pitch tolerance is a, a determination of how tolerant it is in terms of the clarity of the pitch. So the less clear the pitch comes through or the more aggressive you want it to be in tracking the pitch, the lower you're gonna go here with the percentage. And uh, so it'll be less picky and it will actually do more pitch movement. So you usually wanna find some balance uh, between there. So if you have a, like a noisier sound that's grittier, not quite as clear sounding, it might be more difficult for uh, the Surfer EQ to track the pitch. You can pull it down. Uh, otherwise, you can push it up for a little bit more accuracy. There's also a threshold here, which is kind of interesting. So if you notice here on um, on the gain, oh, so I'm sorry. So one other thing, so there's the surf time. Uh, and uh, so this is the tracking time in terms of the surfing, uh, the attack time here, and then the recovery time here. So in terms of the dynamic movement, how fast is it aggressively working um, uh, with the attack of the dynamic EQ uh, moving up and down? And this is the surf time in terms of how long it uh, 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 stays in following the pitch. Um, what we also have here is a live mode. This is like a low latency mode. Uh, that allows it to actually work uh, more rapidly for live sound situations. Uh, so in a DAW, this wouldn't make a difference in terms of the tracking because uh, it would be uh, compensated for. But there is another performance aspect to this, which I'm going to get into in a minute, uh, which makes this really cool. There's also a threshold here. And what you'll notice, um, I'm going to play the bass here. You'll see different colored levels here. And if you notice the actual gain stages here and the different colors as we go up the spectrum, those colors are represented here. And this becomes a threshold. This becomes a threshold for the for the tracking of, of the um, of the movement and, and the of the dynamic movement as it goes through. But you could see it in the different frequency areas. So if you're focusing in on a particular frequency area, you can move your threshold based on the gain with a different color mapped within that. And then you have a, an output gain control to make up for that. Um, what's interesting about this is that you can also do some side chain work. Um, in working with a side chain, this can actually be, and this, this particular song doesn't work well with this uh, specific example, but sometimes you have a bass, for example, and then you have a bass synth where the two of them kind of interfere with each other quite a bit. What's cool about this is if you set up a side chain, you could have a bus feed in. So now the bus and whatever notes are being played on that bus coming into that bus signal is now how the EQ is being applied. So what we can have is the equalization being triggered from an external source. So on that, um, that heavy bass synth, that you have, if you want the electric bass, for example, to sort of drive it and suppress it, you could have it do suppression of EQ just where the specific notes are playing on the bass. And therefore, what will happen is it will just duck out and, and skip out the area where the bass is kind of shifting around frequency response-wise and then apply that onto the bass note. So there's, there's not a whole lot of technology out there that does that um, specifically and, and that accurately. So now you can have the dynamic equalization of the other thing that it's working off of kind of work that way. So you could also do kind of standard things um, that you might do where you have a kick drum triggering, triggering the bass EQ, like that type of thing. Um, although that's probably a little bit more suited for uh, just pure dynamics, but you could has, also have that type of thing. Um, in addition to all of this, uh, all of those basic features, 
um, when you're entering in frequencies, you can also enter in the actual uh, note value uh, that you see. So if you know it's a C4, you can actually click on that, type in C4 in terms of the frequency. Uh, so just to kind of go over this, we have booster attenuation on the left. We have the Q control on the right. Um, in the middle, this is where we set where the harmonic action starts to take place. So it actually, you can shift it up and then you can also, if you hold the control key, you can go into a finer resolution mode so you can really focus it in. Otherwise it will have a tendency to skip around uh, to some, uh, you know, where it's most harmonically related. It'll kind of skip through some standard uh, steps in terms of the frequency. So you can see there's a connection there between the harmonic number and uh, where it's going in the spectrum. So here this is one and you'll see that it's kind of going all the way up there uh, to um, you know what, like 45 or 50 or whatever the total maxed out was. There's one other interesting feature here and I kind of put this on and this is actually uh, something that is a very unique feature. It's a harmonic filter. Um, the harmonic filter, when you when you look at it from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out some of these uh, other uh, filters in here just so you could kind of see this. Uh, so what happens with this harmonic filter is that the harmonic filter, and uh, let me just kind of shift this up here towards the middle. All right, I could have it. So this is just with a little bit of boost. Now there's a few different modes here. That are auto gain compensated. They give you these these different effects. So uh, whether you have it surfing or whether you have it static, you could have it kind of follow around with those things. And uh, so essentially, uh, you you have a couple different ways of working this. You can also have it uh, work in two directions. And then we can shift this. And I can really exaggerate this if I want to. And what this does is it creates some really unique effects. And when you really dig into it with higher gain, um, you can actually create some really, really, really interesting effects. And uh, so you could have it work dynamically. You could have it surf and sort of track what's going on. You could have it stationary. And then you get all the variations of the different modes that kind of go along with that. So that's kind of a, like an interesting effect that is built into the EQ, which is just like uh, very unique. There's one other thing that I want to show you here, and, and this is something that is um, uh, more uh, is related to MIDI information here. And uh, I'm just going to pull this back down into perspective here for a second. Uh, oops. Let's see if I can get my numbers straight here. And, um, and this has to do with uh, working with MIDI. So what I have here is a, is a MIDI uh, keyboard that's sort of attached to this. And then uh, what I have is a uh, pad. And uh, with this pad, what I have is um, uh, an instrument here. So let's just kind of solo this up, move on to the chorus. And, and let's see, where does it play? Uh, it always helps when you know exactly where your audio is. So uh, there we go. Okay, so uh, this is going to be, uh, this is basically, let me just bypass this for a second here. Okay, so one of the unique things about uh, this particular effect is that in this we just have a keyboard pad. And sometimes you want to do something that's really unique. So there's also a MIDI mode. And what this does is it allows filtering to be applied in a variety of specific ways. So if I enable MIDI input, so in addition to key uh, sidechain work, we can also have MIDI 
uh, information being fed in to, to uh, uh, create um, filter movement and changes. So instead of surfing the actual notes that it's detecting on something like this where it's harmonically driven, I can actually go ahead and perform this in on my own. And there's a couple, there's three different MIDI modes here, which is kind of cool. So let me close this down here for a second. So what I did was I created a high pass, low pass filter that is, I created a high pass and low pass filter here to filter things down and then I focused an EQ on this band so we could hear the original sound. So here I can kind of shape and move the filter. Now, um, this I'm just kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of flubbing my way through it, but you get the basic idea here. Uh, there's also another mode here uh, where it will uh, surf by note. So this will override the detection. And uh, whether otherwise what will end up happening is that it will try to detect, try to detect the pitch until I hit a note and then this will override it. And because this is uh, like harm a lot of harmonic content, it's not that particular mode, it's not gonna work well for this. So the basic idea there is that it will track the pitch until I hit a MIDI note. And so I can record a MIDI note and maybe I can freeze it uh, to a specific location for a particular section of the song. So that's just uh, one other quick way to do it. And there's another one that's interesting, which is instrument mode. And in instrument mode, what happens is, is that the music, which is what you heard in the beginning, it's basically muted until until I hit the key. All right, so you hear me spazzing out over here on the keyboard. Uh, let's, let's kind of bring this a little bit into perspective in the mix and just hear what that was. And anyway, so uh, that's me spazzing. <laughs> yeah, so it, it sounds as awful as, as it actually looks, if you could see me. Um, but you get the basic idea. So if you kind of program the MIDI in there, then you could just kind of uh, program in the notes of what you wanted to play, when you wanted to play, and get it to respond pretty quickly. Uh, there's a little bit of latency here because I, I'd have to actually go through and adjust some of the uh, delay compensation engines to kind of tighten it up a little bit. But you get, the, and that's going to be my lame excuse for really horrible playing. I'm not a keyboard player as you could uh, plainly tell. But you get the basic idea how you could take something simple like a pad and turn it into something completely different with a filter and then basically be programming in exactly when you want it to play. This is like so many ways that you can kind of get into this and dig into this and use it. And when you add in the characteristics of the uh, movement in terms of pitch tracking, the ability to have the, uh, the pitch actually uh, uh, be surfing, be dynamically boosting or attenuating, be dynamically gating, uh, and uh, working with all those different things in addition to all the different surf times, attack times, release times, and thresholds. There's like a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous amount of possibility with all of this. Also sidechain triggering. It's really, really a ridiculously amazing EQ with a lot of flexibility and I uh, wish I put on a better demonstration for you here, but you get the basic idea of what this uh, fundamentally can do. Uh, also, one last quick thing, if you hit the Sound Radix thing in the bottom, it basically acts as a bypass, uh, which you can do with uh, most host engines anyway, or all host engines, but uh, that shows up there as well. So uh, there we have it. It's a, a really, really cool one with a lot of uh, really great, interesting added features that are in there. Uh, a company that makes some really amazing stuff. If you should check them out. Uh, if you haven't checked out Sound Radix, 
um, they uh, they have some also uh, some very cool stuff, and I've done some videos on uh, some other products like the drum leveler, which is another really powerful tool. Also some phase correction tools. Uh, but the Soundrotic Surfery Q2, great updates, and uh, that is the plugin of the week. <laughs>